Dive in as we make a clay shell, sea life finger puppets, an under the sea diorama, and window aquarium clings as hands on goes underwater. Hands on is made possible by Elmer's Products Incorporated manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business. Elmers.com Floracraft Foam Make It Fun MakeItFunCrafts.com The sea and underwater holds lots of surprises. There are fish and plants in beautiful colors, and who doesn't love a vacation at the beach? We begin with these great shells. Bring vacation home with you every day with shells you make from paper mache. I love this little shell in the background that I've surrounded with real sand and seashells. Let's see what else we need to make it. You'll need some sand, some shells, paint pens, decorative paper, a foam egg, instant paper mache, a shadow box, some thick glue, acrylic paint, and a craft knife to cut your foam. The first thing we're gonna do is cut our egg in half. And we've got our sawing motion going. We're just gonna try to saw it as evenly as we can. Now the next step is kind of crazy, but we're gonna take the, th the thinner of the two halves and then smush it between our hands because we wanna get this thing as thin as we possibly can because our shadow box is only so deep and we're gonna build up the thickness with our clay. So you wanna just mash that down, taper the ends a little bit and then mash it down again. And we've got our seashell form. The next thing we're gonna do is mix our paper clay. This starts out looking like this, powdered paper, but then we're gonna add a little bit of water to it. And you can find the instructions in the box and you're going to mix it with a spoon or a fork or I'm going to protect my hands with this glove. And you would just keep mixing that until it's consistently mixed and looks something like this. I've got some ready for us. Now you're going to pat your clay over the foam like so. And you just want to kind of smooth it out. And this is kind of cool because the glue is already in our paper mache so we don't have to add anything and it's already sticky. Just smooth it out. You can use your finger and some water to make the clay really smooth. And then you want to add some lines to give it that seashell look. And you would just keep working your way on around the edges, adding clay as you go. And then when you're finished, you're going to set it in a nice dry spot to dry, somewhere where it's not too humid. And we'll work this edge a little bit more. And you can see in front of me, I've got one ready to go that's already dried out. I've got a couple here, actually. Now let's make it into a real seashell. Once you get your dried piece, you're gonna add a little bit of color. You can make your seashell whatever color you want. I'm gonna use a, a, an off-white here. Oops, I got a little clay on my hand here. And you're just gonna brush this paint over. Now the cool thing about these is they're really lightweight and you can't break them. So you would just keep brushing paint over and you can kind of blend it in like you go, as you go. And you can add some orange on top of that and it looks really cool when the paint swirls together like this. And you would just keep going until you've covered your whole shell and you'll have something like this one. Now you can use some paint pens in whatever colors you like to add some more details. Let me come up here. I wanna add some 
polka dots. Oops, I forgot to mix my paint pen up a little bit. Give it a good shake. Let's come over to this side and we're gonna add some polka dots. Cause you can make your shells a little bit funky, right? And we got one ready right here. Now to work on the background piece. I've gone ahead and base coated the back panel of the shadow box frame. And base coating simply means just giving a coat of paint like the brown for the sand, the blue for the water, and light blue for the sky. To add a little bit of detail, you can use paint pens to draw some plants. I'm imagining these kind of things growing along the dunes, which is a sandy park up in Michigan that I go to. And you can add as many as you want. You can add some short little spiky ones. And then take a look at this one that I've really embellished with a little bit more paint and some other colors of paint pens. Now to finish off the shell, we're going to just put a little bit of glue on the back piece. And I've just cut this little circular, half circle piece from decorative paper. And then you're gonna add a little bit more glue to the back of your shell and set that in place. And then let's take a look at our finished sample. I've painted the frame to match the inside piece and then filled the bottom with sand and more shells. If you don't wanna make the whole shadow box, you could make this sweet little pearl necklace. This is the shell. I just poked a hole in the top and stuck a Chanel stem loop so I could make it into a necklace. What if fish could talk? Reese is back with this finger puppet to create an underwater play. I just love this thing, it's so fun. Um, I'm, now, as I understand, there's actually more than one puppet here. Yeah, this is a five in one finger puppet. Okay, so show me how got, it works. You've got your, your seaweed finger puppet, you've got your three little posable fish that come on and off, mm -hmm. and then you've got the big fish. The amazing master of the sea. I love his fan tail, let me see. So cute, okay. Adorable. So um, I've got our materials ready. So we're going to need some sh tape in uh, sheet form, some hook and loop dots and um, strands, mm -hmm. strips, scissors, a compass, some tape in roll form, a ruler maybe, some chenille stems. Are we good to go? Good to go. Okay, Let's so do it. show me how to make the base of these puppets. Okay, so this base is really simple, and you can use this to make a variety of different animals or finger puppets, but you're, you're basically just gonna make a simple rectangular base. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So you start off with a long strip okay. like this. Oh, I like this. It doesn't even stick to the mat that Yeah, yeah this like... is really the perfect work surface mm -hmm. for this kind of craft. Mm -hmm. So then you're gonna Fold it in on itself, like okay. so. Okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect, as long as you get it somewhat in the middle, like that. Okay. So you've got a piece like this, and then you're gonna fold that over, and you're gonna secure it with two pieces. So it easy. And all the rip. measurements are going to be on our website, oh, so. Oh yeah, okay. go to the website, it'll explain every step in case you okay. didn't catch it the first time, but okay. super simple. And okay. so then you're just gonna take your second piece, that's a ripped strip, so okay. it's half a, half a strip. Mm -hmm. Fold it around, and then you would just trim that. Like so. And repeat on the other side. Right, I've got this one right here, so that basically gives us our, our base. Perfect. Now, show me, let, this is the fish's body, but then you've got this really neat tail. Yeah, and there's a great way of how you make the head, so uh, you, you would attach the tail. Right. With another piece mm -hmm. on, on the inside of the body. So you just put it on there and then Okay, so I kind of lost inside. you here. <laughs> it, um, on the fan part, uh -huh. is this, do we just kind of fold it back oh, and yes. over like a paper fan? Oh, let me show you how to make that part. Okay. So you would start off with a strip. More tape. More tape. <laughs> In roll form, okay. Yeah, so actually you're gonna use two strips for this step. Okay. You've got that one. Mm -hmm. And a second one about the same size. I love how this tape comes to life in these projects because it's so flat and then you do some folds and all of a sudden you have all of these different it's, little it's animals. It's such an easy these. craft and I love it because it makes no mess. Cute. You can just kind of do it in your free time. So to make the fan tail, you'd add I that on. I my finger out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving sticky. that sticky part showing. Okay. 
And then you, you'd fold this over like so. Oh, I gotcha. And then you would just trim. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you would just fold this to fan it. Oh. And that's still open and sticky on It's sticking split. to there itself as it goes. And that's the plan, right? That's, that's what you plan. want. So then you've got the fan. Okay. Oh, that's so easy. <laughs> just and like then, that. See? okay. And so then, then you the, attach that. Yeah. Then this just sneaks up then you just underneath. Put it in there. Okay. And you would attach that. And um, let me actually just get the finished one because that's going to take a little bit of um, a second. Yeah, you want to just kind of like position it right. perfectly inside right. on the inside. But then the mouth is. How do you fold the end? Oh, okay. So you, once you've got your tail end mm -hmm. like so, mm -hmm. you just take the front end of your fish and mm -hmm. press down. Okay. And you're gonna go corner to corner. Okay. And that makes your fish more three dimensional. Okay. So let me just see if I understand that. So we're just gonna take it, push it in, and then it comes down like this. Yeah. And then you would just secure that with a little bit of tape. Okay. Couple of. Oh, and that goes out. Little strips. All right. To secure it. Okay. And then you can do the face. Yeah, and let you, you've got a few pieces laid out. This is pretty easy. It's just silver tape and then a black tape dot. Yeah, and I or went ahead and started this. So I just cut a piece of black mm -hmm. duct tape sheet, put it on there. Mm -hmm. And then you could just cut around it and trim. And you can do this by eye, or if you like, you know, you can measure it out perfect with a compass. Right. Or you can even use googly eyes if you're precision. really short on time. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, the next um, thing I just love about these are the plants. Oh, yes. Okay, let's so scoot fun. our fish over. Make a little space. All right, swim over here, buddy. So and then these we've are got also some... really easy to do. <laughs> okay. So, we're going to make these little seaweed forms. Seaweed. Using duct tape and chenille stems. Right. So all you're going to do is take a roll tape. green. And you could use other colors if you want to have really exotic mm -hmm. sea plants and you could embellish them different ways. So you're going to take a piece that's slightly longer than your stems. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can do two or three at a time, but you want it to I be a little longer. Again. Perfect. Okay. And and then you're going to lay these on top, mm -hmm. in parallel lines. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. You see where I'm going with this? I sure do. And then you're going to sandwich that with another piece on top. Right. But just for the sake of time, I've, I've created one over here. Thank you. With two of them. Okay. And then all you're going to do is cut that out. And you want to kind of get some curvy lines here, right? Yeah, you don't they're... have to be very straight, which is great, because in nature, I think there are no straight lines in nature. Mm -mm. At least I've heard. That's what I like to say when mm -hmm. my art's not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but perfect, yeah. <laughs> Perfectly I, imperfect. Uh huh. <laughs> so um, once you get these cut out, then mm -hmm. you're going to have kind of these long pieces, but your plants are not like we aren't having them this tall. Oh Did yeah, you fold so them? let me show you how I fold that. So you, you just take the rest of these. Okay. And, you know, could do it a little cleaner, but for now I'll just show you. So okay. you've got five in mm -hmm. the different colors and I kind of fanned them out like so. Okay. And I think I even made some shorter and, and you could play around Arrange. with it and see how you like, yeah, fl Definitely. floral arranging. And then you've got your little green finger puppet base. Mm -hmm. Just gonna lay that all on top of there. Right. Take another piece of tape. This is so easy. It's really easy and, and fast. Really fun. So while you're taping that up, I just want to kind of get this other little fish sure. over here so we can talk about this one. This one is just another. Um, you've cut out some pieces in cardstock and then sandwiched them in between some other colors of tape, and you put a little bit of hook and loop on the back, mm -hmm. and so they just come over to the. They can swim on over and yeah, you hang out or not. Little little uh, hook and loop fasteners. And then you can rearrange them. And then you can do some layering. And so then you just lift this up. OK. And that's it. And then you can. We're ready to can, swim. Well, yeah, you can you know, arrange your seaweed, which right. for me is the fun part. And right. then you, you add more hook and loop fastener. Yeah, cute. And on your fish, on his fin, yeah. You would add a little hook and loop fastener, mm -hmm. just cut the fin out of tape, and you're ready to go. And you can make other animals, too. I love this. This is so fun. Thank you. Thanks so much. 
create this colorful diorama of your favorite under the sea creatures and a few imaginary ones too. We've got some colorful bottom sand made from glue sticks as well as brightly colored fish. Let's see what else we need to make it. So you've got your decorative papers in all different colors, a tape runner, multicolored glue sticks, cupcake wrappers in all different colors, maybe some clothespins here and there, blue cellophane, a trifold display board, some thick glue, and we're ready to go. So the first thing you're going to do is lay your display board down. You're gonna open it up and lay it down on a roll of cellophane. And then you're gonna wrap the cellophane over the back of the board. And I've got mine ready right here. I put the white side of the board behind the blue cellophane so it shows up nice and brightly. Now, when you are folding it over, you're gonna bring the edges over and then before you seal up the sides, you need to make sure it's loose enough so it can still bend just like this. If you wrap it tightly like a package, it won't be able to bend. So we're going to make sure that's loose and then you're gonna zip up the sides just like you would a package. Now, you can go ahead and cover up all of the um, backside with the decorative paper. And I'm using a tape runner that's basically double-sided tape. And you can put your pieces into place. And some over here. And you would just finish that off. Now let's jump to the other side where we get to start decorating with our fish and plants. Now on our website, you can find the patterns for all of the sand and plants. You can kind of make these up as you go too. To color these in, you're just gonna use these multicolored glue sticks and just smear the glue over the outline. And since this is all in our imagination, we can use some different colors. And I love how when you put those side by side or overlapping, it makes new colors. And then you would do this for all of your bottom pieces and plants. Set it aside to dry and you'll end up with some pieces like this once they're cut out, just like this. And you would cut out the outlines and now we can start gluing these pieces in place. So we're gonna use some thicker glue to do that. And just going to add a little bit of glue and you can, you can put another plant right here but you get the idea, you're going to build your whole bottom of the sea. Now let's take a look at some fish and how to put those together. There's lots of different fish patterns on our website and I wanna just show you the basic construction of one of them. Let's look at this little fish. We've got two hearts for the body, a teardrop for the body, it's a heart for the head, excuse me, and a heart for the fin. And then to make an extra little, um, three-dimensional fin, we're just gonna use cupcake wrappers. And you just cut in, we're using the crinkled edge of the cupcake wrapper. And you would just remove that whole circle. And then you can cut the piece into little fan-like wedges. And these are perfect for fish fins, right? So you can make those in all different colors. Let's look at this purple fish right here, where we've used three different colors of cupcake liners and overlapped them. That gives it a really great three-dimensional look. So let's glue a couple of those to our, our underwater diorama. There we go. And you can kind of, when you go to put these on, weave them in and out because fish swim in and out of plants. So we're gonna put the end of that plant right on top of the fish. And we're gonna add another fish. And it would be also fun to use some hook and loop tape. And you could put that on the back of your fish and on your board and make them interchangeable. You could move your fish around. Now, can you guess what this is going to be? It's our jellyfish. And this pattern's on the website as well. And to make this, you're going to just put a line of glue on the back, add some tentacles. And these are just little strips of paper that are cut in wavy lines. Very easy to make. And you can add a lot if 
you've ever seen a jellyfish, it looks like they have thousands of these. And I'm going to add one more. And you can slide them around to get them exactly where you want them. Let's move those over. And then let's add a little bit more glue here. There we go. Now this is going to be a little tricky to flip this guy over. So let's get right where we want him to go. Okay. And we got him. Press him into place. And now we're going to add a little bit more dimension with these strips of cellophane. You can cut these out and then just use the blue glue stick to adhere them to the background piece. Now these are the same color as that you wrapped your board in, but when you put two together, two layers together, it just makes it look a little bit darker. And you can add as many of those and you'll want those to kind of weave in and out of your pieces too. Now let's take a look at our final diorama. You can see you can add lots and lots of details. You can even take a permanent marker and add some more ripples. Any window or mirror becomes your aquarium with these Klingon shapes. Let's take a look at the hands-on window. You've got these crazy wave borders at the top, and then down under the sea are all these sparkly uh, aquarium fishes. Let's see what we need to make them. You're going to need some wacky straws, permanent markers, semi-transparent vinyl, paint pens, glitter pens, wiggle eyes, the page borders, suction cups, some thick glue, and a hole punch. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is cut a small piece of vinyl. And then on our website are lots of shapes, um, like fishes, the jellyfish, a crab, and a turtle. Print out your shape and then lay your vinyl piece right on top so we can see what we're doing. And then you're simply gonna use permanent markers to color in the shape. And you wanna to try to stay in those lines. And you can, of course, make the fins different colors, whatever you want. But I'm gonna color in the whole thing yellow and then add some details with some other colors. And I'm coloring. Make sure we get all the way to the edge. You could even come up with your own imaginary shapes. Lots of things live under the sea and you could come up with your own fish varieties and plants. When you're done with that, you can take some red and put it right over the top and that'll blend right in and highlight our fins. You can also, this is my favorite technique, take a paint marker, make sure you give it a good shake before you start and then I'm gonna add some polka dots. And these kind of remind me of scales. When you're finished, you can brush on some sparkle with a glitter pen. And I'm just going to put a line on each fin. And this is best to use over the permanent marker sections, not with the paint pins because the paint pins require a little bit more time to dry. But you're just going to brush this out and it, you can leave it a little dimensional. It doesn't have to be smooth. I love the sparkle. And then we're gonna do the fins. And after it dries, you're going to have something that looks a little bit like this. Now I wanted to show you the jellyfish because it has a few extra parts and pieces to it. But you see, I've got my thick sparkly uh, layer and now it needs some tentacles. So to do that, we're going to make these crazy straw pieces that are stretchy and springy. Now you just, we've got this special tool that cuts the straw in a spiral and you're just going to feed it in in one direction and once you get it started, you can just loop the end of the handle around and around and around and around. And you see how that's cutting the straw to make it crazy. So next, we're gonna need to cut this out before we add our straw tentacles. And 
We'll get all the way around our loops here. I used purples and blues for this jellyfish. And then I love the way the aqua tentacles look with the sparkle, it brings it all together. Before we um, forget, all of these little characters that I have in my window aquarium have eyes. So you'll wanna use some thick glue to put a couple wiggle eyes on. Isn't that cute? Now we'll flip it over and you can use the same kind of glue. Put a dot on each end and we can glue some of these in place. And you'll wanna leave that to set up mm, for a few hours, if not overnight, because you want those to hold nice and well. And then the last thing we need to do is give it a little bit of a hole punch. And I've got one more little friend to add to our window aquarium. It's this cute little sparkly crab. So let's go ahead and add him into the mix. And that completes our window aquarium. That's our show. Join me next time as we create some very practical crafting projects for your every day. Hope you can join me. Projects and ideas from today's show, plus hundreds of other kids craft projects for every occasion, season, and even school subject are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is show 1508. Hands-on is made possible by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business. Elmers.com Floracraft Foam Make it fun Makeitfuncrafts.com